What's up everyone, Maximilian here, and welcome back to Season 2 of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, The Online Warrior, and we've hit the legendary Episode 25. Usually in comic books in the 90s, the 25th episode was something big and special, and I kind of wanted to highlight a topic in today's episode that has been in a lot of questions that I've seen, and on the minds of a lot of people that have been trying to get better at Ultimate Marvel 3, and it's kind of something that's good to recap to understand where this game is going, why it works, and how effective it essentially is. If you guys didn't get the chance to check out the previous week's episode in episode 24 of The Online Warrior, we were discussing the different things that go on with Infinite, how to pull off Infinite, how like the future of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 does not look very bright, and stuff like that. If you guys are looking forward to all those rumors and stuff, I try to cover them in the previous episode with uh, stuff that's been going on as far as expansion packs and things like that. But today, let's focus on Team Synergy and some of the most powerful combinations in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Because this has actually been on the, uh, I, I follow a lot of the Twitter profiles of a lot of these top players, and I was watching a lot of Final Round last weekend, even though I didn't get to see all of it. And a lot of the really prevalent stuff that is ending up to be really powerful in the long run is going to be these base teams, these set teams that are going to that are going to last the test of time throughout the rest of the uh, the competitive lifetime of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. A lot of the stuff like you know, like with um, Sentinel and Captain Commando, and how you had Storm and Magneto and Psylocke and stuff like that. You had these teams in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 that were so effective and so good that they would stay in the game. They're not going anywhere. There wasn't something else in the game that would mystically pop up and make them inferior. No, like, these teams were here to stay till the rest of time. So, there is a couple of teams in Ultimate Marvel 3 that have already been sustainable in winning tournaments and will probably remain substantial in winning tournaments for a very long time, if not forever. So let's let's start right at the beginning, and I'm going to talk about some stuff that's very effective online that you're probably not going to see go away, and I'm going to talk about the stuff that is extremely effective just regardless, and you probably won't see go away either. The first thing that I wanted to discuss is essentially how effective a character like Doctor Doom is. Uh, Doctor Doom has three really effective assists, one of the best beam assists in the game, and the greatest if not one of the top tier assists, which is hidden missiles, ends up being so freaking good that Dr. Doom essentially fits on every team. You put one character and you add Doom to it and you essentially have team synergy. It's that crazy how effective Doom can actually be placed into any team. And he works pretty well with the majority of, of assists as well and he can hold his own. He's good at keep away, he's good at rush down, etc, etc, but he's just got a little bit of a barrier of mobility that you gotta break to get good with him. All you guys already know that Doom is damn good, that's why you see him on every single other team. The next character that also is effective on almost every single team, but isn't as much an assist character, is Virgil. Virgil's one of those guys that is able to sustain himself on almost every team, and if you have team synergy with Virgil and almost everybody, you or Virgil with almost anyone in the cast, you essentially have some kind of synergy of some kind because of DHCing into Virgil and things like that. Virgil's also a very good second or third character. He's an amazing level 3 X-Factor comeback character. That's why Virgil's so high on the tier list, right next to another character that is amazing on point, which is Zero. Zero is freaking fantastic. This is why so many people like complain about Zero, Virgil, and Doom teams, is because it's like the best of everything in the game. These three guys make up so much a part of Ultimate Marvel 3's competitive life, and competitive nature probably from here on out, that you're never going to see this stuff go away. Zero is one of the best point characters in the game. And essentially between Doom, Virgil, and Zero, even if they're not on a team together and they're just alone, they give the rest of the team so much synergy that they are so effective in that regard. They are that good as characters and they're probably the top three best in the game, with Virgil being on the number one spot. One of the other one that I wanted to discuss is another mixture of another assist character that is extremely effective and makes for a lot of synergy with a lot of teams and one that I've pretty much used since the beginning of Ultimate Marvel 3 coming out. And it's the Strider Vajra Assist. Strider Vajra Assist, obviously you guys know from watching all these videos, but if you don't, it causes a hard knockdown with an extended period on the ground that allows you to pick your opponent up off the ground, continuing for a pretty damaging combo without that much hit stun scaling. It's very effective, and when you combine other characters with this, like 
Doom as a great example for his standing heavy kick or his standing uh, standing heavy or his standing medium to OTG or character in for at least like 500 to 600 damage anywhere on the screen, if not like 800 in the corner. You got Dante who can confirm into about 700k, depending on how good he's at hit confirming into his um into his sure you can uh, medium move and then bouncing guys off the wall and all this stuff. You can get like 700, 750 to maybe 800 if the, if the combo is optimized. It's really good. Wesker's another amazing example of mix-ups. Mix-up opportunity with Strider is just ridiculous, and this is what why I think Strider is so good in this game. Despite the fact that he's a glass cannon, he hardly does any damage. His combos are pretty hard to do in comparison to the rest of the cast and are extremely not damaging. His assist is that good, and the fact that he's got this little extra bonus thing where his assist placement works so well at the end of a team because he works really effectively as, as a level 3 X-Factor comeback character because of his speed, he, he works so well on so many teams, but especially on character teams that have Doom, Dante, Wesker, and especially Virgil. Virgil's another one of those guys that just works too damn well with Strider. Guys that have teleports especially, they just rip stuff up because they're able to take advantage of a mix-up to the opposite side of your opponent, and Strider comes down, hitting your opponent for a hard knockdown, and Virgil can just OTG into X-Factor or whatever the hell he wants. The other one I found to be pretty effective, even though not absolutely required, is also Nova. Nova has got a pretty easy off the ground with forward heavy, and if you capitalize on that with the Strider Assist, dude, you've seen it in the majority of my videos. Ever since I've been picking up Nova, I've found that to be very effective. You just gotta be pretty careful with the uh, the placement of Strider sometimes, because, because of his glass cannon status, that dude dies fast and he dies hard, but like I was saying, Strider remains as one of the better characters in the game because he offers a lot of team synergy. Even though he's not a great DHC character, he's not a very damaging character, his assist works so well and the fact that he has a good placement on the end of teams for level 3 X-Factor puts him really high up on the list of character compatibility that we're talking about right now. The next one that I wanted to talk about is something that we've been seeing for quite a long time and on a majority of teams and it's the combination of Nova with characters like Spencer. Uh, what's amazing about Spencer is that he's he's a ridiculously powerful point character. He almost fits on any part of the team between first to second to third. He's a great DHC opportunity because he can go into a continuing combo as long as he didn't do a ground bounce. He's a ridiculous level 3 X-Factor comeback character. But what's amazing is the fact that if you hit an opponent off the ground or if you have a combo setup and you combo into his grapple move, that is uh, his grapple assist move, it actually resets your opposition into a standing state, which is so freaking effective for combos and resets that it makes it makes Spencer immediately good on so many teams, especially with characters like Nova. Uh, the the, the mix-ups that you can get off of resetting somebody into a neutral standing state, if you guys don't know, that is so good, it's crazy. It almost makes me want to play Spencer on any team because he's that effective in the second character position because of his DHC ability and his ability to have such a ridiculously good mid-combo assist. It's probably one of the best assists in the game for combo extension or mix-up extension because for a lot of you guys that might watch a lot of Marvel and understand like how the hell am I supposed to do anything in this game, a lot of the guys that are really good have a mix-up for absolutely everything. Anytime you escape from a combo, anytime you might like bounce out of this area or do a jump forward, these guys have something that is ready for it and is able to make you guess between left, right, or up and down. That is how Marvel is played, as a complete guessing game, and if one person's in control, then that is what's going to happen all the time. It's going to be 50-50, I don't know where the hell I'm supposed to be blocking, but until you get better at the game, you're going to find a way to get out of there. So Nova and Spencer work so well together, and essentially Spencer as an assist, that is just super powerful. And if you guys are looking for some natural team synergy, check those two out. The next one that's really good as far as an effective point character that still remains dramatically, dramatically effective from the first game, which is shocking, is Wolverine. Uh, I was kind of shocked when the game first came out that Wolverine still remained so damn good in the first character position because of his amazing DHC ability uh, from a point character to the next character. Like, he does about 700k damage off of a ridiculously easy combo. Now, what makes Wolverine so good is his rushdown ability with certain other characters. Essentially, Wolverine works amazing with almost any beam assist in the game. Any characters that have a powerful beam assist, like Doctor Doom, like the Unibeam from Iron Man, or uh, the Bolts of Balthak from, from Doctor Strange, all these end up being so good for Wolverine 
that his mix-up potential on the ground is just a natural synergy starter, and he's able to continue a lot of combos with certain other character beams as well because of his down-forward medium off-the-ground attack. What also works extremely well with Wolverine is a couple of other select characters that a lot of top players end up using, which is like Akuma or Frank West. Uh, what's great about these two assists and why they work great with a point character is because they hit multiple times and they carry the opponent to the opposite end of the screen. And because of Wolverine's naturally fast mobility, it's not a problem for him. He can just easily dash forward with a heavy or a medium and pick the person up for the remainder of the combo. Uh, what's even crazier is that with certain characters like Akuma or Frank West, the hit stun scaling can be pretty big, but Wolverine can capitalize so much on the damage because he does so much damage alone. So Wolverine with beam assists or Wolverine with like Akuma or, or other characters like Frank West that carry the opponent, super good. And you really got to look out for that stuff. The other stuff that ends up being really good that is seen fairly prominently uh, nowadays as far as leveling up a certain character is Frank West. Uh, Frank West requires you to get him to level 4 or level 5 X-Factor. Other than that, he's a pretty good character but not extremely effective. And there's some characters that work so well getting him to level 5 that it's some of the best synergy in the game. And these two characters are Nova and Super Scroll. And you're probably already calling this because they have moves that engulf a giant sphere move of fire. And this move, if mashed upon, can actually get you even more hits than normal. And does like 50 to 60 hits per move. And if you guys obviously know how to level up Frank West, it all depends on the hits and the combo. Snap a picture and by one basic combo with Nova or Scroll, Frank West is almost immediately level 4 if not a level 5 with a simple combo extension. That is some ridiculous synergy if you have a good Scroll on point or a good Nova on point to get Frank immediately into level 5 or level 4 because he essentially becomes one of the best characters in the game at that point. And it, I very, very rarely, like, and you guys can probably like, quote me on this, like, how often do you see a Frank West die in a level 5 x fact or a level 5, like, leveled up position? It, it's very infrequent that a Frank West is going to lose if he actually gets to that point, so it's one of those things that just naturally gravitates towards that character because of how effective he is. The other guy that ends up being pretty good, but not, like, extremely effective, and more effective in an online environment, and we're actually seeing a lot him a lot more prominently in a uh, offline environment now, is just the Hagar Assist. In general, the Hagar Assist is essentially the Psylocke Assist of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. If we compare it to the original game, he's still the same in the original game, or similar to it, just slightly nerfed, and Tron with her uh, Tron Bond-like Gustav Fire. Uh, these moves were practically completely invincible in the first game, and the thing with the Psylocke Assist in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is the fact of how fast it came out and you're able to pop people up. And what happened before was that Hagar in the original game caused a hard knockdown based off his assist, but this does not happen anymore. It's just an extended juggle period, but nonetheless, still ridiculously effective and very good, which is why Hagar fits on a lot of teams as far as characters with certain bounces or armor to their moves like Sentinel and Hulk and you guys seen Kane Blue River doing extremely effective using things like this assist because you can essentially just throw it out and Hagar also beats Strider pretty hard. He kind of murders the Strider assist so his his synergy kind of counteracts the other synergy on some other teams if you know what I mean. So some of, some of the times you're going to notice how some effective character like combinations are actually going to totally beat out other effective character combinations, which leads me to my next one of some of the most powerful stuff in the game. And this one isn't even exactly powerful in an online environment. Uh, I'm sorry, in an offline environment as much as it is an online, but it's still pretty damn good even in an offline environment. And this is Hulk with Sentinel Drones. Uh, now, the reason this is crazy effective, especially in an online environment, is because your inputs are delayed by anywhere between a quarter of a second to a half second to a full second. And because of this, the drones come at a, such a, a separated pace. The drones also become an extremely effective move in general for rushdown characters. They are so good because they cover the entire screen. They start low, they end high, and they make you unable to jump in a lot of situations, which makes high-low mix-ups very effective. But for some reason, when you include Hulk in this situation, Hulk gets many opportunities because of his armored moves and the fact that he can combo sometimes pretty easily off of uh, OTG combos or just get... Things that just rock you into his like asteroid move and Hulk Smasher. This this stuff can be very effective, and it's hard to escape because Hulk has this gamma charge move that can gamma gamma left and right and up and down across the screen. And push blocking this has to be very sensitive. You have to get the exact specific timing. And online, this is very hard to do. Uh, if you have somebody that's extremely effective with Hulk and Sentinel drones, 
it can almost feel impossible to get out of this unless you understand the exact push block timing and the exact moment that you need to hyper jump out of that whole situation and start keeping Hulk at bay. For some of you guys that are looking as a counter to things like this because it, it is online a lot and you guys will run into this a whole bunch if you do play the game online and I'm sure you already have. Some of the stuff that really blows this up are characters with really fast beams and beam assists like Magneto and uh, Doctor Doom even. If you have Doctor Doom, some of the things that shut out this stuff almost completely is Doctor Doom's butter gun, his jumping heavy. That will almost nullify a lot of stuff that Hulk even wants to do at all, and if you have a good assist to back you up, it's almost a complete counter strategy to that. So, give it a shot. Just be very careful with your air dashes if you ever run up against a, a Hulk and Sentinel team that is very good at what they do. It is ridiculously powerful online. And finally, to the character combination that is never going to be leaving Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, according to many top-level players, especially since the final tournament, is Morrigan and Doctor Doom. Uh, once again, Doctor Doom accompanying the space of hidden missiles, and Morrigan with the Soul Fist barrage that covers the entire screen as she recovers meter from it as well. I don't know if there's much else I can say about this team, other than the fact that it shuts so many other things down that there's no effective, perfect counter for this. You need to have a very specific strategy, and the other person kind of has to mess up. The person that's using Morgan and Doctor Doom kind of has to fail at what they're doing for a moment and screw up. Uh, one of the most effective strategies for not dealing with this is immediately X-Factor canceling Morgan and killing her as soon as you can. If you run up against somebody online or in any environment that is essentially relying on Morgan and Doctor Doom to do very well, what you want to do is kill either one of those two characters as soon as possible. That's the most effective counter strategy, but a lot of the times, Morrigan's whole strategy is that you're never going to get within half screen distance of her. She is that good with that character, and like I was saying, a lot of perspective from many top level players is that amongst all these teams, all this team synergy and combinations of all these dudes that we just talked about in the last 15 minutes that make Marvel 3 so crazy and hard to block, and all this stuff, Morrigan and Doctor Doom stops absolutely all of it. And if you have an effective player that is able to consistently hit and execute 100% or at least 90% of the time of what they want to do, Morrigan and Doctor Doom is going to dominate tier lists and dominate this game pretty much from this point forward. So you better get used to it. Let me know if you guys have any ideas or combinations of characters that you, that you think might deserve in this list at all. I'm sure I missed some, as we don't want to go too deep into this. And I think maybe, maybe in the future I kind of want to make a video and show you guys and understand why, effectively, these characters are so good together in case you don't actually watch tournament footage all the time. Let me know if you'd like to see that, and as always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. My name is Maximilian, and I'll see you next week.